Hi, my name's Mark, and I'm trying to find my counsellor, a guy called John Shanks, that helped me with my HIV diagnosis. I was told, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. It could be three months, it could be six months, but it's looking likely that most people that get this virus will die. And isn't going to kill you in like that. It's going to be long, drawn out, painful, ugly as well. And also, I couldn't go home and tell people. It wasn't like cancer, it wasn't like diabetes. So it was devastating in every single way. In the 1980s, AIDS was the biggest public health crisis to hit the UK in a generation. And Mark found himself right at the heart of it. The 80s only seems like yesterday, but it was a world away, the way society thought back then. The age of consent for if you were gay was 21. Mark was only a teenager, and on top of that, we have this dark shadow of AIDS looming over him, but also the whole country. For me as a young gay man, seeing those newspaper headlines tells me that my life isn't worthy, that I'm dirty, that I'm not deserving of, of anything, and anything that I am deserving of is illness and death. And there's nowhere to turn. Every single way you look, it's negativity, a horror show, a threat of violence. So it was an incredibly frightening, isolating time. What happened? Because you were in a very dark place. So how did you survive? I went to the guy called John Shanks, who was my therapist and counsellor at a place I used to go to called The Landmark in Tulse Hill, near here in Brixton. And it was a, a service centre, a support centre for people who were living with HIV or had full-blown AIDS. And I want to meet John to thank him. You know, he had such an impact on me. What would you say to him? I want to say to him, look what I became. I'm on the hunt for John Shanks, and it is not proving easy at all. And even if I search for the landmark, really nothing comes up. But then that's not surprising, because it was a very sort of confidential place. I know nothing. I don't know where he is or what he did or if he's around. <laughs> well, it says he was associated with uh, Bon Jovi, so that's not the John Shanks. You think that everybody's on the internet. Our John Shanks is proving hard to hunt down. I am so thrilled for Mark that we found John. But, you know, I am delighted at how far we've come as a society that Mark can now live as an openly gay man. But young Marks can do that. And that medical science is now on top of AIDS and HIV. There was a point in Mark's life where he didn't know whether he would survive. And finally, he can meet the man who got him through his darkest time. John. Sure. That's amazing. You look exactly the same. <laughs> Can I have you again? <laughs> oh, God, it's so good to see you. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. <laughs> and you obviously are great. You look wonderful. So do you. You don't know. <laughs> oh, my God. I never thought I'd see you again. I was working out. It's... Sorry. <sighs> it's 28 years since I saw you last. It's just been nobody else left. I saw that. Nobody. We survived. And I'm so grateful to you. But you did it. You did it yourself, but uh, it's great to see you. Do you know what I remember? Sure. You were full of ideas. And I remember thinking that you have everything you need to get on where you want to be. And if you'd lost sight of it temporarily, you would find it again. So I, always, I felt very confident that you'd be okay. That's what I remember. <laughs> and that you'd do it, you'd, what you did. It just set me on a path of, of doing the stuff. And I went on to do that work. You know, right, okay, tell me, tell me. I bet I knew you'd do that. <laughs> So I went off to uh, volunteer yeah. and now run my own 
kind of community interest company. That all happened because of people like you. So you had those ideas, even then you had them. And it's great that they've all worked. Why did you get involved in there? Why did you, why did you volunteer there? Can I ask? I don't, well, I don't know. I just remember at the time thinking, right, okay, this is like a war. Yep. You know, everyone's got to do something. You've got to think of something you can do. What can you do? And I was working in mental health. I thought, well, that's what I know. Maybe I can do something with that. And I was never sure if it made any difference, but you know, you, you know you're there and listen, try not to interrupt. And we walked together for a little time. And some people didn't have a lot further to go. There were so many people who just really went. Yeah. I mean, and this is part of why it was really important for me to find you, to let you know I'm still here, because that's yeah, really yes, important, yes. to remember those of us who've who, gone, who have gone, yeah. you know, and aren't, aren't here to tell this. Like they told us things, really important things, that we need to remember. Yeah. We had the job to carry that on. And I think we have. Yeah. I walk every day in their memory and try to continue doing my work and live my life as a survivor, because I am. Yeah. Oh, it's been so good to see you, John. I'm glad you Seeing John after all this time has been really, really emotional. It makes me remember all the friends and people that didn't survive that really, really dark time in our history. And I'm really, really glad that I had the opportunity to let him know that somebody that he helped all those years ago made it through to the other side.